Hi hi, this is Amy. In today's video, we are going to talk about if China a travel-friendly country or not. Even it is a yes or no question, but I will now provide you an answer and you are going to decide after hearing this essential travel guide based on my experience. The main reason I want to create this video because after the pandemic, there's not much travel information being shared on the internet. As someone who can read and speak Chinese, I was worried about getting around in the country as well. I just came back from a vacation and I am going to share my experience on the essential travel guides when traveling to China and hope you find it useful. So let's move on! Number 1. The Payment There are a few ways to make a payment and the best way is to use WeChat Pay or Alipay. Both of them has English versions and you can simply put your identification information and your visa card in it. As simple as that and you are ready to use. However, some people have trouble going through the identity verification. So please pay close attention when you put it in your information. Otherwise, it is possible that they reject your request. So don't make a mistake. With this two app, you can make payment in China anywhere. No matter it's the luxury store or the vending fields on the street. Paying by cash is always acceptable. It is illegal for the owner to reject cash. However, it is highly possible that they don't have enough changes for you because cash is not a common payment method in China now. You might probably think in paying with your credit card. Sadly to say, not all places accept Visa, but many big cities like Beijing, Shanghai, and Guangzhou might be. But it also depends on the owner. So the best way is by WeChat Pay and Alipay. As long as you are able to get through the identity verification, you don't need any worries about that. Here's number two, map or navigation. Sadly to say, Apple Map and Google Map is not the best map to use in China. You do have access to Apple Map because Apple is being used in China, but it will probably bring you to some small roads that are not walkable. If you have VPN, you do have access on Google Map, but I don't think it's able to provide you the best road possible. If you can read Chinese, this is the best map and this is the map that I use. It's called Gao De Di Tu. But I don't think there's an English version because I went through the app so many times and I could not find an English version to change the language. But don't worry, there's another app called Baidu Map, called Baidu Di Tu. There is an English version on that app. It's really easy to use and both apps look very similar to Google Map or Apple Map. Both apps allow you to call car service, save places that you want to visit, and check up on transportation. Number 3. Transportation I would say the metro is the most convenient to get around in the city if you are traveling alone. I just simply follow the instruction on the navigation app and I am able to get to my destination. In the station, there are both Chinese and English signs so don't worry about not able to understand where to go. Inside the car, the voice instruction is clear and clean and they are said in both Chinese and also English. So you were able to know which stop to get off by listening to the instructions. Buying a metro car is also convenient. You can just buy it from the vending machines or the ticket machines. You can just simply go to the ticket machines and you are able to choose English as your language in the machines. You can use mobile payments like the one that I mentioned previous or insert cash. To insert cash, you can only use paper cash 5 RMB or 10 RMB or you can use coin 1 RMB. Other than that, it's not acceptable. To get into the station, simply tap your car once and please keep your car in a safe place because you need to insert a car before you leave the station. If you want to get from one city to another in China, besides taking the plane, you can also consider high-speed bullet train. I make a video of experiencing high-speed bullet train from Shanghai to Suzhou. Feel free to subscribe to my channel and wait for that video. Overall, it was a really fun experience, especially looking at the speed number increasing, and it was really, really fast. Based on my experience from Shanghai to Suzhou, it was about half an hour. That was really, really convenient, and you don't have to wait a long time before or after. Car service. Besides calling car service from the navigation app, you can also use the WeChat app and search DD 
or you can simply download the app DD app to call the car service. Tip number four, living or a place to stay. When you book hotel in China, make sure the hotel that you are booking are able to accept foreigner guests. If not, they will not allow you to check in and it will be challenged to find another hotel last minute. So for me, to prevent that happens, I call the hotel to confirm if they are able to accept foreigner guests before I book it. And I use booking.com to book the hotel. Also, I just booked five-star hotel just in case. So please be mindful of that. Tip number five, internet service and also phone number. I have T-Mobile and it is free to use roaming internationally. So the internet service is not the best, it's not the fastest, but I am able to chat, use app, and calling through the apps. So I have no problem just using the roaming from T-Mobile only. And I did not open a phone number because it is not easy to get a phone number in China because everything needs identity verifications. I would recommend to use roaming if your mobile company provides the plan for that. Or you can look up for SIM card for your internet service because based on my experience, it's really not easy to get a phone number. So these are my top top 5 tips when traveling to China and those are the must know and essential based on my experience. So during my travel, one thing that I noticed is that most foreigners has a local guide with them to translate or bring them around to the city. So that would be great if you are visiting for the first time. Overall, based on my experience, even not every owner are able to speak English, but they are more than welcome to like help you and use like hand language to like explain it and communicate. And they all seem pretty friendly based on my experience. Um, if not, then that's like one or two cases. <laughs> Because even I am able to read Chinese, there are a lot of things that I don't really understand. Like buying the ticket for the first time, I just walk in and they will ask me like, Oh, did you have a ticket? I say, no. Because they're like, oh, go to that side and buy it from the ticket machines. And even when I was ordering, I would ask like, which one did you recommend? I never tried any of it. And asking like, what's the difference between number one and number two? Because even I am able to read Chinese, but I still hold those confusions and they are more than welcome to answer my questions. Alright, by hearing all those tips from my experience, so did you think that China is a travel-friendly country or not? Even though there's many rules and restrictions, but I feel like every country have their own small rules and restrictions. It just... It sounds really inconvenient for many people based on internet, but once I go through it by myself, I feel like mobile payment is pretty fun you just like it's neither you scan them or they scan you and it went through in a second and you don't have to like go to all those caches and thinking like oh it's this one or that one so thank you all for watching i will see you in my upcoming china travel vlog bye bye